These boxes are cheap drill press kits. I got them for about $20 each on eBay. Now, why on earth would I need two drill presses? Well, I'm not actually using either of them for their intended purpose. For me, it's just a cheap way to get a relatively robust press without having to custom build one. The second copy comes into play for spare parts that I'll be using to modify the first one. I'm making a longer bracket from the handle of the second press, which should give the up and down motion a little bit of extra range. This press is going to become a plastic injection molder, and the longer range of motion it has, the more plastic I can move. The basic concept with injection molding is heating up a medium to its melting point, and then injecting it into a negative, a mold. So all this machine really needs to do is heat up a bunch of plastic and then squeeze it out of a nozzle. The only other thing restricting my range of motion on this press is this pin. I'm replacing it with this longer bolt that'll allow the lever to move a bit further before stopping. With the basic press motion working, I took apart the other drill press head to use as a holder for what will be the heating chamber. Now, I've had these materials laying around for a long time. I've been waiting to do this project for about three years. It's one of those projects where my ambition got ahead of my actual skills and I wasn't ready to do it when I chose to dive in. But three years later, now I think is the right time to get this thing done. I've got a deadline. Almost exactly a month from today, I'm going to Adepticon in Chicago, a convention for tabletop games and a lot of miniature making. I'm going to be meeting up with another YouTuber, Trent from Miscast, and he's going to make some molds, and I'm bringing the injection molder, and we're going to run it out of the back of my car and make a bunch of miniatures for people. So with that deadline fast approaching and my making skills hopefully good enough to tackle this project, we're just going to go for it. Now, the plans for this injection molder I didn't design myself. The idea and these custom milled parts for the plunger and heating chamber came from a YouTuber called Buster Beagle 3D. He's updated the design a lot over the years since I bought the parts for the original version, and his work on this project is super creative and very easy to follow, so check out his channel if you're interested in doing this as well. These are the heating elements we're going to be using. Super simple. Stick them on the heating chamber and wire them in parallel. They'll be connected to a simple temperature controller with this temperature sensor attached to the barrel. When I first saw Buster Beagle's video, I was kind of shocked at how simple these things really are. At least at a small scale, it's literally basically a scaled up hot glue gun. No motors, basically one moving part, no programming, just a simple off-the-shelf PID temperature controller. And to make things even better, since we're using off-the-shelf parts, I hardly even have to do any soldering. The temperature controller has basic screw-in contact points that I can just crimp on a connector and screw in. This makes it really easy to make changes later, too. I got a bit impatient after wiring up the power and tested it. There's nothing hooked up, but so far, so good. The only other component is this simple relay that the power running to the heating elements is going to go through. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, other than making miniatures with miscast at the convention, what am I actually building this for? Well, the unique advantage of an injection molder over something like a 3D printer is that when it comes to making large batches of the same product, the efficiency and speed of an injection molder is hard to beat. Now, I haven't really talked about it much on the channel yet, but a big overarching project I'm working on is designing a tabletop game. I'm going to attempt to do as much of the production by myself as I can. That means injection molding little spaceship miniatures for your character to move around the map, even stuff like custom printing and embossing tins that the game is going to come in. It's really exciting. I really try to avoid talking about things too far in advance before before they actually happen, but I've been working on this thing for several years at this point and I'm very psyched about how it's going. And getting this injection molder up and running is a small slice of that. You'll hear a lot more about it in the coming weeks and months as the channel keeps growing and the project progresses further, but for now, the injection molding of the spaceship miniatures is the focus. Before we start messing around with custom molds though, we have to get the molder itself actually working. 
On the first full power up, everything seemed to be working, the heaters started to heat up, but my temperature gauge was going down. This was a bit concerning for a moment until I realized what the problem actually was. Yeah, so it's just reading negative, so switching these backwards should bring it back to positive. A pretty easy fix. I had just wired my two leads for the temperature sensor backwards, so it was reading the correct temperature, just negative. With my beautiful new creation spitting out wonderful plastic fumes, it was time to clean up the desk and move on from wiring to actually mounting all these components. I chose to use this base from an old photo enlarger which is now mounted to my desk as the top camera rig. As always, somehow I find a way to incorporate scrap wood into literally anything. The original design from Buster Beagle had a 3D printed enclosure for all the electronics, but I wanted to add my own little flair to the design where I could. Whenever I do wood staining, I like to do it straight on my desk. Whatever I spill doesn't go to waste, it's just free wood stain for the workbench. I opted to mount the temperature controller at 45 degrees so it's still nice and usable whether I'm operating it seated or standing. I might change all this orientation later, but for now it gets the job done. So now that I have everything packaged up into one solid unit and it's not a mess of dangling wires, I'm going to take it out to my car and see if I can run this thing off the inverter so I can do on the road injection molding. Okay, so the hope is I can get this thing up to about 200 C, 400 Fahrenheit in that range without it smoking out or breaking or something. Now the moment of truth, when I flip this switch, will... It popped my breaker. Apparently not. We are reading 75C, still hot from earlier. We'll see if we can get it all the way up. Watch my car just light on fire in 30 seconds. I think the computer is slowing down because it's, uh, it knows it's close to the target temperature of 200. And there we are. That's a success. I think that's hot enough to melt polyethylene, which is what I'm using. My source of polyethylene? Harbor Freight 5-gallon bucket. The really cool thing about injection molding is that basically any injection molded product you can cut apart and reuse the plastic yourself. Some kind of grinder setup eventually might be pretty nice for this, but for now, cutting them apart works and into the fire they go for the first extrusion test. Now, I don't actually have any hard molds yet, which will be a whole nother project, but with the molder working, I gotta try it out on something. For now, a socket and an extension will function as sort of a de facto two-part mold. And as a tiny preliminary test, it actually worked out pretty well, aside from all the rust it picked up from the inside of the socket. Once I've got them made, I can actually tackle some pretty big molds with this thing. This was only about half the barrel full of plastic. So overall, I'm really happy with where this project's at so far and what it's able to do. Honestly, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get this thing working in just a week for the video. That being said, making molds for this thing is going to be tougher than, you know, a traditional resin pouring mold. It's a whole different set of design constraints. So next Tuesday, we're going to dive into that and see if I can make me some little spaceship miniatures. And I'm very excited to share more details about the tabletop game. But that's it for this week. Thank you for your time.